that, mate. Get out of that, mate. Fuck out to what dark is up from the base off to go in. I'm ready to go. Get his legs out, mate. Just do not be that thing. Just want you to strike me. Keep going. Don't shoot down your throat. Look at me. It's a stick up. Don't make it a murder. I'm here to help you, mate. I'm here to help you. Fuck out to what you would drop the face off. Keep going. I'm ready to blow. You really got no teeth yeah. at all. Yeah. So much for no more ass sex. Man, I'm living like a king. This one is really hard. Bombs rule. Make sure you stay tuned and watch all the exciting action. Good day! You remember me, right? Welcome to Bomb Hunts. Thanks to all this recent press and all this fan mail, we've been able to secure a grant for a brand new film. This is my assistant, Beverly Lynn. Ever since we got our grant, Beverly's been great as far as being here to help out, to giving me my notes, answering phone calls, and to plotting the recent activity in the different areas. So it looks like a, 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 some kind of storage box that he's made into his living habitat. We're gonna try to sneak up on it. This is a good one. This one's off the Richter. I got a good hold of his arms. Right here. Go down there, mate. Go down. Yeah. Hold on. Not gonna hurt you. Not gonna hurt you. Oh man, look at the grip on this one. Oh, you can see obviously. This one works out. Just hold on there, mate. Just want to get a few good of your readings, and we'll let you go. All right. Oh boy, this one. Woo! This one's off the Richter. Oh, oh I knew. We can't. We can't. It's all right, there, mate. It's all right. Come there. I knew when we snuck up on him. I thought. I heard something just in the beginning, but I just maybe thought he was sleeping. And when he ran like that, wow, I didn't know, I didn't think that was gonna happen. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna try it again. Ah, shit. Get it, look at that. Get it good, boy. A little, a little grab there. You can tell that he's still a little tense in the hands here. It's all right there, mate. Obviously doesn't speak English of any kind. A lot of screaming and yelling. Doesn't really know how to communicate fear. And because he's so rare out here, not a lot of his friends will come up to help him because there's not a lot of people from his colony in this particular location. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get up off him now and I'm gonna back up and we're gonna hope that he's not too aggressive and not too snappy. So just hold on there, mate. We're gonna get off ya. Ah, you're a beautiful buck. You're a beautiful buck, man. Hold on there, mate. Hold on. Obviously, he's really tired. He's got his legs undone. Let's back off, back off, back off, man. Back off, back off. Now, the most important tool that I have in my lab are my bum files. Three generations of hunters have been keeping files on all these homeless bastards we've been catching. That way we can check their revolution, their toothlessness, and their crack addiction. My grandfather was the very first man to actually start a bum fire. My grandfather was the first of his kind. Here he is on his last recorded successful hunt. Unfortunately, his final hunt ended tragically when he was mauled by the most rare of all species, the Montreux Grande, commonly known as Big Mama. Ironically, the Big Mama species is the only species Grandpa said he would never dare to hunt. He took me on my first expedition. He taught me the fundamentals like where to look and where to smell and where the bombs sleep and the signs of habitation. He taught me how to stay on their tail when I was chasing them and he was even there for my first hunt. 
It was a hygienist lack of lotus. Boy, I really struggle with that smelly piece of shit. I'll have to admit, I was a little scared back then. But now hunting those dorts island lazy creatures is like second nature. Isn't that right, Beverly? A docile creature, one of those you see pushing a cart full of recyclables on the side of the road. The hygienist lack of lotus, woo! That's a real smelly bun where you walk by and go, what's that smell? The mega bag of hunches, that's that one bun where you, you think he, he's got something growing out of his back, he's got such a bad hunchback. The no changes yellow lotus. Now this one's a little more aggressive, cause they'll ask you for change, and if you don't got it, they'll go, well fuck you anyway. Real aggressive. Now this one really made a big scene in San Diego lately. It was real docile, but became aggressive cause they said someone took advantage of them. The Bumphitis Suolotis. for no more ass sex. Tom Go Down and me, and we welcome you to the most beautiful section of Los Angeles, Skid Row, for the second annual Bum Run for Rum. <laughs> I can't believe it's been a year since the catastrophe of the first run for rum. Oh yeah, that was fucked up, Hugh. Let's jump down to the field now and get an explanation of this year's course. Right in the beginning of our course, we have a really challenging 53-yard dash where our competitors have to run from here... ...right here, and then they go on to the toothbrushing station. We know how challenging it is to be a good hygienic bum. That's why we haven't brushed their teeth. I personally checked them, but I gotta wear my gloves, mate. Cause you yeah, know, I could put my hand in one of their masks, they might snap off my finger. Whoa. This here is Larry. And what they have to do is get speed, good enough speed going. As you can see, it's not as easy as it looks. After all contestants push their partners, through the hard rocks, they have to come to this rope section, whoa! They're gonna come over here to these pantyhose. Now to all these guys, it's really natural for them to put a pantyhose over their head. Because what will happen is, when they decide to rob somebody, they don't want anyone to recognize them. So they're gonna put these pantyhose in and go in the tricky wraps, which is really rough. And right before they go in, they're gonna make a scary face like this. Roar! And our contestants come through the ropes, they have to run through these tires. This test is their agility, which is very crucial when you're out in the wild. Find out part of our obstacle course. These are some fourth grade math problems. These happen to be addition and subtraction. All our contestants will be doing only addition. And that's the very last part. For each missed answer, you get one point deducted. No one can fucking out. out, out. I'll do me on my buggy push. Wow, Larry looks strong, doesn't he? Which Larry? Doesn't really matter. They all look the same to me. <laughs> I've been pushing buggy for uh, six years, and I don't think anybody will break my We've been pushing buggy across all kind of terrain. 
Would you like to try? Uh, hey! Uh, yeah, yeah. Nuclear! Nuclear bomb! <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Willie got stuck with a white guy this year. I don't know, Hugh. I heard Ivory got busted for knocking over a Mini Mart. That should help with the scary face section. Fucking A, Tom. Yeah, wow. Where's his partner? Where would you be, Tom? Ugh. Last year we had some good times, but our course developers have gotten real tricky on the bombs, making it real hard for them to succeed. We're gonna have a good time. Keep watching. <laughs> This is a stick up, don't make it a murder. You can tell he said that before. He can have my money, Hugh. Folks, it's Q49 and Q Team. Do make 459 for the third point deductions. One minute, 22 seconds. That's for our first group. Get an LT. Now, there really is no substitute to bomb hunting when it comes to gathering facts and research. But some areas are just too treacherous and populated with vicious species. That's why my father conceived the idea of a bomb cage. I designed it to his specifications nearly seven years ago, but were unable to afford it until now. With a grant from the Museum of Homeless History, we are now able to build ourselves an aluminium bomb cage, which will allow us to go in the most vicious and aggressive territories that are known throughout the bomb kingdom. Check this out. These are my guys, they're great. They come in here eight, nine in the morning after a long night of drinking and they don't mind working a little bit. As you can see, this is the cage here. I don't know if anyone has um, seen the chain link, but we were able to uh, get a, a sponsor. A sponsor, he, uh, he gave that to us really late at night. He told us just to go by and pick it up. Hi, who are you? Where are you from? And how old are you? My name is Miguel. Uh, Stanley Steamer. Are you the carpet cleaner? Only on females. My name is Heaven Wright, and I'm like 31. I'm from Florida. I'm like half Italian and half black. What's your idea of perfect girl? Hotel. <laughs> Do you like to go out on the town? Yeah. I would take her to the only place where she could have to take off all her clothes, which would be a sauna. What would be your idea of like uh, the perfect night on the town? Uh, no dinner. Then I would take her out to dinner. No dinner. Oh, this is hard. Sailboat. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, Sandcastle. Welcome back to Bomb Day. I'm Living Lodge, and this is the show where we pair up two filthy bombs and take them out for a night on the town. Julie believes she was once married to Jim Morrison of the Doors. She's looking for a lazy man to spend long days on the beach, begging for change. Bill would like a romantic woman with a little spunk to match his high energy personality. Let's take a look. I'm actually looking for a man who has absolutely no interest at all. I'm looking for a uh, personality, like uh, she can handle her liquor. Like hanging out in the park, doing absolutely nothing. I like being harassed by the police. I got that tattoo in the Venice one day with Jim Morrison on the doors. And they put pure jealousy on me, and then the police got involved. Well, people definitely are strange. Especially those that give you a tattoo and then put jealousy all over you. Looks like we got a great couple here. Let's see what happens. Good eye. Now the bomb cage is a very hard tech piece of equipment, but we need something to make the bombs come around. And that is why I invented the bomb chain. Long as they don't pay if you grab the trick. You know, as the saying goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And this is my treasure. Right here, you want to get yourself a good cot. Because the cot will act as a giant sieve for the trash as you go through it. Now, when you make the bum chum, there's four parts. 
The most important is the, the fast food chain restaurant trash. Got a couple onions. Onions are great for smell. Mums love onions. There it is, the jackpot. I got about five, six fries here. That's perfect for bum chum. Oh, really? this is a real treasure here. Look, I got a full half-eaten sandwich. Love that. One pot. Here we have half-smoked cigarettes. A lot of bums find these in ashtrays or, or next to like a park bench or something. They love those. That's one pot. Here, this is a real kicker. We put this in for flavor and for scent. This is a 40 standard cheapest in the coin. This is what they get with their random pocket change. A fourth pot. Bums love pocket change. When you throw that in the mix, look out, it's a deadly combination. Got some dogs here. I want to stay far away from them. We're gonna go over this one here. This one's known to be very sick in the area. He's got a bad cough. Hold on, hold on there, mate. Hold on, mate. Hold on there, mate. Hold on. Get his legs out, mate. This one's obviously a fighter. He's from the Spanish region. You can tell by his vocal range. Hold on there. Just relax. Relax there, mate. Relax. It's okay there. Huh? Huh? You sound like a guy. You sound like a guy. This one is really fine. Hold on there, mate. Hold on. Hold on there. Hold on. Hold on. Relax there, mate. Relax. Relax there, relax. All right, he's calming down a little bit for us here. It's okay there, man, we're not gonna hurt you. Like I said, this one's obviously from south of the border. You can hear by the vocal cords and the way that he's fighting. Right now, he's giving up. He's kind of playing dead, which is a, a common trait that the Spaniards possess. They can play what we call this possum, which is just like playing dead so your predator might leave you alone. Right now, he's hoping I'm gonna come on in, take a smell, not like what I see, and I'm gonna get on out. And because he's been such a trooper, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna untie his legs right now, and we're gonna move on, and hopefully find one. This beautiful is a specimen, by crikey. It's really hard to find a Spaniard in this area. So let's go ahead and move on. Let's back up the cameras, mate, and we'll see what we can get. There you go, man. I'm Mink Logan. And I'm Chuck Carpet Burns. <laughs> Welcome to Trading Boxes, the show where two bums, oops, I mean homeless people. <laughs> Those toothless bastards. They swap dwellings and decorate each other's place. Now today we're going to one of the nastiest, most urine-soaked areas in the LA Basin. Our two extremely lazy neighbors better roll off their crack whores and get to work if they want to win this week's Trading Boxes Challenge. Now this week, we could only find one designer willing to go into this area, so we're going to have to rely on the quick thinking of Blaze to help get us through this contest. So score some dope. And get your drink on. And watch as we turn these shit boxes into beautiful shit boxes. <laughs> yeah. Box owner Larry wants a place that will allow him to be left alone to smoke his pipe. Everybody talks about how down it is down here on Skid Row and shit, and how tough it is. But man, I'm living like a king. All right, this is uh, my bedroom where I crash and party. There's been some hellacious parties in here, man. It's kind of a mess, and I'm used to that. This is the entryway. Some dude got jealous because I was with his old lady one day and tore the entrance. All right, this is my living room. I want everybody to be able to come to my house, be comfortable, have a good time, no hassles, no bullshit. This is uh, my study. This is where I kick back, do my reading. I could always use more books and maybe some way to catalog them, you know, so they're just not all piled in a box. Callie loves his spacious tent, but is frustrated by sleeping on the ground. Also, his bathroom is only large enough for his toothbrush. Can Blaze make this beautiful bathroom more efficient? Hey, they call me California. This is my place. You can come on in and hang out if you want to. Okay, this is my living room. I hang out here when I'm not sleeping. I like to change it because I need a bigger TV and a bigger radio. Okay, this is my entertainment room. 
And I like to bring little girls in here every now and then. Not little girls, but you know what I'm saying. A little lady in here every now and then hang out with her. This is my bathroom. This is where I come here to do some business, whatever business that might be. This is my bedroom. I hang out here when I got somebody to hang out with so we can do things that need to be done in the bedroom besides sleep, <laughs> you know? Now, we're gonna have you guys trade boxes for 24 hours. Now, you guys can do anything you want to decorate each other's boxes, but you only get to spend six fifty-seven. okay? So now remember, there's absolutely no peeking at what each other's trying to do, okay? okay. All right, now if you guys are ready, let's switch pan handling cups. And you guys, let's get started. Let's go, right, go, boy. go. The first time we brought up a bomb cage, we were really surprised to see how long it was taking the bombs to gather around. It was almost like they were communicating and thinking about what they were going to do before they came over. But whoo, what they did, were they ever curious. They started coming up and asking me a bunch of questions like, what are you doing here? And, do you want me to toss your salad white boy? And then they got real aggressive. Like this here, check it out. This one is showing me where a crack or bit is reproductive organ. You can see how excited I am. Watch how quick this pack of hungry bombs circle the cage. It's funny, the most common trait of a bomb is laziness, but in these parts, they're damn aggressive. Notice how I'm trying to do as little as possible. See, I can't appear as though I am working because we all know how bombs respond when they see work being done. Uh oh, it looks like it's gonna get interesting here. See this one? Get out of here! Get out of here! Take it the camera! Take it the camera! Come on! Come on! So it, it kind of looks like maybe you should have spent more time on, on, on building it and making it more uh, sturdy. Yeah. Instead, you probably got stoned and drunk and uh, kind of did it half ass. Woo! Was that ever a scary situation? You could see that it was real aggressive territory there. We had the cage and the bombs just knocked us right over. And I thought, guys. Technicians, what are we gonna do about this? And they say, we need to be a little more mobile. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put wheels on the bottom of the cage, and if the bombs start getting too aggressive, we'll be able to pull you out with rubs attached to the Jeep. Those files under lock and key. Now let's talk about the video that you just saw. Now a lot of novice hunters out there might think that the big, fat, ugly woman that they saw was a big mama. Not true. There are no big mormons in the LA basin. Also, there was something missing from their hand. Food stamps. Only big mormons carry food stamps. This is our guy right here. In most cases, I would be keeping my voice down. But it's not necessary for this particular species because he's drank so much. Come on in and get a closer look at him. The sneakers aren't in bad shape. It's obvious, you know, he's he's got so much money that he can go anywhere, any kind of thrift store, and buy whatever he likes. In fact, and probably in this region, he's almost known as a pimp or a player because he's got money and alcohol, and these other guys out here, they don't really have nothing. I'm gonna try to turn him on. You always want to protect the head on the pan handlers. It's very important. Give me some of the 3P lotion. It's got a lot of sores and bruises. Thanks, Emma. What we'll do is, uh, in the wild, he's not able to heal from those really well. So what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of this lotion on, and that will help him to heal just a little bit better. There you go, there, mate. There you go, there. It's also got a nice scent to it, so when it goes to maybe a girlfriend's house, or uh, you know, a prostitute that he might visit for the night, they like that smell. You can tell here, look at all the calluses right there. Look at all the calluses. It's obvious that, you know, he does a lot of panhandling, a lot of grime under the fingernails. Boy, 
really makes me sad when I see a species like this that has such, you know, marked up hands like that. But you know, when we rub this little lotion on, and what normally in the wild would probably heal in about two or three weeks, it's only gonna take about two or three days now with that lotion. Right now, all I can do is, like I said, I go to the beach because I want to get my tan back up and I go to the gym. Right. There's yeah. really nothing I can do till probably around the 10th of next month. Yeah. So it's like I took a vacation. Yeah. I'm, so on vacation. I was on vacation. I'm on vacation too. Okay, right now I'm looking for your nachos. Where would them be located? Your nachos, where would they be located? Right now I'm looking for like the menu. A la carte. Cheese nachos. Okay, what all do you put on them? You just have cheese nachos, cheese and steak nachos. Yeah. Can I get jalapenos? Yeah, I'll take cheese. And do you have any um, hot sauce? Glass of ice water, maybe if you have lemon. Do you have lemon for the water? Lemon for the water? I'm not trying to come on to nobody, but I'm taking my jacket off. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what I do you do good. for excitement? For excitement? Working, I really love working. I'm very outgoing. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, I'm like a health nut. <laughs> hey, I'm. I'm you mind? I just. Hey. I don't know where your hands have been. I walk. I don't know that. <laughs> I'm looking for that type. Oh, don't know where he's at. I hangs I'm, out in the park. That's what I do. I hang out in the park. <laughs> don't know where. Does I'm absolutely not. nothing. Don't do nothing. Do you see a future in us? Yeah. Because bombs can get aggressive so quickly, we need to make sure we protect me in the cage. So right now we're spraying it with an aerosol deodorant. And what that deodorant does is it acts like a tranquilizer to the bombs because it's a scent that is so unfamiliar to them. Right now we're gonna draw this area where we experienced a lot of aggressive bombs in the last time we were here. Not actually seeing many structures, many tents of boxes at all. Real big for this area right now. You know, bombs are particularly hard to research sometimes because they're also known as transients. And what transients will do will move to different parts of the area where there's more resources. It's obvious here that they've depleted their resources in this area and they've moved on somewhere else. Now, Tom, Team Confusion structured their relay order in a pretty unorthodox fashion. You know, I have to agree, Hugh. Let's look at their first run. Robert has an interesting Far Eastern running style, but it proves to be a threat to both he and his teammate. And look here, he's kicking Dustin to the toothbrushing station. Well, that's bullshit, Tom. What a cocksucker. He certainly got the teeth for it, Tom. Indeed. On the other hand, putting the most emaciated teammate in the buggy makes sense. Good point, Tom. Hey, check out Paul's dental work. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> I ain't no jive. I ain't no joke. Uh huh. I ain't coming to play around. You see what I'm saying? Hey, who, what competition? Ain't no competition out here. What did they, they gonna do? They can't beat us. You know what I'm saying? We were just playing around. Boy, these guys sure are confident. Let's see some highlights from Nuclear Bomb. Oh, that's gonna cost them. See here, Whitey's inexperienced with the toothbrush. Sure is evident. I mean, come on, two hands? Yeah. Tom, the switch up is an advanced technique. He's just not good enough. No, back bullet. No, back uh, bullet. Back bullet. Let's go. You ready to get started? Uh, you, I'm always ready. Okay. I was born ready. Okay, Larry, so here's what I think we'll do. Mink talked to Callie, kind of got a rundown of what he'd like to have happen. Yeah. And over your right shoulder here, you see this gorgeous bathroom he's got? Uh-huh. I think a great accessory in there, kind of spruce that up, would be a toilet. So we'll do that. Makes okay. sense. Okay. Makes sense. Then if you take a look back here in the bedroom suite, 
Uh -huh. What he doesn't have here is a comfortable bed. You got that right. All right, let's do it. See ya. Hey, good to see you too. How oh, you doing? I'm doing good. Larry told us there's a couple things that he'd like to see kind of fixed up a little bit, okay? The first thing is back here in the master bedroom suite. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have any sheets right now. I say we get started. I don't know what those are pubes or not. <laughs> What is it? What is it, KY? Look at how sweet he is. Alright, you sleep well now, okay? He's so cute. Right now, there's a bum over in that area right now. It's obvious he's got a problem with his arm. What I'm going to attempt to do is go in, and I've got a splint and a little bit of a wrap, and what I'll do is wrap up his arm, and hopefully that will help it to heal. He looks kind of timid and kind of out of it, possibly a little drunk. And he's looking at us right now. I'm gonna hopefully go over there and not spook him too much. You hurt your arm. You all right there? Just relax, mate. Relax, relax, relax. No, no, no. Here to help you, mate. I'm here to help you. I know your arm hurts. I know your arm hurts. It's all right. It's all right. Just relax, mate. Relax, relax. Relax. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, mate. Mate, mate. Look, look, look at me nice. Look at me nice. It's all right. It's all right, okay? Okay, just hold still. Just hold still. I just want to take a look at your arm. I noticed that you were, you were favoring your right arm there. Now, you don't want to move around too much, because what will happen is this splint will come out, and it won't do any good at all. What we're going to do is we're going to give him a little pocket change. He'll feel a little bit better about the situation, because we want him to trust us. We want him to know that we're here to help him. All right, mate, I just want you to relax. If his right arm is hurt, he can't use it to pan hand, so he's got to put that left hand out there. So I feel bad for this mate right here because he's not able to get any kind of drugs or any kind of alcohol or cigarettes right now. Take a shot of this, mate. Take a shot of this. This is the first thing I saw when I came in. Obviously, that's a knife. Now, out here, it's very dangerous, so guys got to keep something on them like this for protection, something to, uh, you know, to warn off other predators because a small guy like this is very susceptible to other predators that might come up and try to bite him ahead him. He's got no markings or tattoos of any sort that I can see, but I've never seen this guy down here. He's a smaller guy. Maybe could have had a career as a jockey, possibly a, uh, you know, an acrobat or a gymnast of some sort. What we're using as a splint, it's a trim to a sofa that we found out here. If I came in here with a brand new bandage, he would immediately try to tear it off and rip it off because it's foreign to him. He doesn't know the smell, he doesn't, he thinks it's new. And we all know that bombs don't wear new clothes, they only wear old clothes. All right, I'm gonna get off you now, mate, just relax. Yeah. When we left you here, Bill, they were... See my guys are spreading all the bomb chunk. They're trying to get a good base right around the cage because we hope that some of the bombs will come over here. All right, guys, it looks like we have a little activity. Why don't you go back in the van? Oh, look at this. Look at this specimen right here. It looks like he's actually working out a little bit. This guy's obviously attracted by the chum. Wow, oh, this is working great. Bum chum is great. Look, he's picking up this stuff right here. Ah, oh, they're all coming around. Once one of them smells it, they all come around and they look at it. Boy, crikey. Hopefully the deodorant will, will the chum. What the fuck you say? Oh my god, we better got out of that one alive. Can't believe I got I got out of there with no scratches and bruises, that was amazing. Woo, those bums got aggressive quick. We're really lucky to get out of there, Lloyd. Woo, that was a scary one. Did you happen to see the welfareist not an office? There was the bitch with the steel pipe. Now, let's check in with the bum run for rum. Welcome back to the bum run for rum. Just in time for the final races. Let's go to Team l, l After an excellent run, we see in their second race highlights that it's all about communication. Wow, that's one hell of a stop. Man, the crowd goes wild. I have no doubt that we're going to be the winner. We're going to drink scotch all night long. Well, we knew they were the favorites, Tom. They had the time to beat, and I truly doubt these other morons had the talent to touch them. Nobody's going to do that less than one fucking minute. Yeah, we burn. Burn. I got so beat. <laughs> and I beat you. <laughs> Who's next?
cannot believe what I'm seeing here, Hugh. Nuclear bomb is sniffing LNL's backside like a dirty dog whore. The math is right. We may have a new leader. 523 and 316 do make 839. Wow, Tom, unbelievable. Let's see what the key to victory was for Team Zebra. We had it in us all the time. Let's see. Let's see that. We know that's it. That's it. We bad. What the fuck did he just say, Hugh? I speak jive, Tom. It sounds to me like he said something like, she's not Italian. What does that mean? Well, let's play it back. <laughs> the, we we had it in us all the time. time. Yes, see, see, see she's, she's not, not Italian. Italian. Well, he's got a point there, Hugh. Yes, he does, Tom. Where are you from? L.A. All right, how long have you, been, how long you been out here? Downtown, maybe about 17 years. Yeah. So what are, what are your friends call you down here? 19. Why's that? Because my finger missing. Oh, and I see you got a dust mask. Dave, is that to help with the uh, the dust from the cardboard here? No, no, it's not, it's not the cardboard dust. See, uh, you got me working in a cesspool of piss and shit. The mask desensitizes the smell somewhat. Great, this is great. One of our box owners, Callie, needs his bathroom remodeled, okay? So check this out. Got some toilet paper. Got a bucket we can use for refuse. Coming along pretty good, Larry, don't you think? Hey, I think you, we're doing a great job, man. How's it going, my, guys? If it was any better, there'd be a law against us, but uh, I'm just kind of kicking back and taking a break, you know? We, I got my worker here. Slow and easy. Hey, guys. Hey. Oh, my voice is shitty. I'm just blowing in mind completely. I am good. So are you looking forward to the rest of the evening? Yes. What are you hoping we might do? Make a miracle. I want a dog that hates me. Wait. I'll find a dog that hates you. <laughs> she just needs a little help or whatever, you know? I feel once in a while there's an alien from being a bitch. That D really has a lot of problems. <laughs> Jim, Jim, the man of my dreams just, and I look in space. Well, Bill, Julie is looking to make a miracle, and with Jim Morrison talking to her through her headphones, it seems like divine intervention may be possible. We'll be back. Once we get our bum cage out, we're going to take it, we're going to roll around the corner and wash these bums in the natural habitat. This particular area, the bombs are known to get especially exhorted and sometimes dangerous, and they've been known, even there, they've been known to kill and eat people at times. You want to watch for a lot of potholes. Unfortunately, a pothole will kill a hunter. <laughs> I'm gonna toss you a salad, black boy. Well, you, our final contender is Team Confusion. Surprisingly, their time was pretty good, Tom, so they have a chance. I think the key is for Robert to remain as pumped up and as enthusiastic as he has been. Definitely a hazard, Tom, but Robert's really moving this time. If Willie can get out of the toothbrushing station smoothly, we may have a dark horse winner here. Excuse the reference. He's out smoothly. This is gonna be close. Tough to watch, Tom. Fucking train wreck you. Both math problems are, are correct in there. Unfortunately, their time was a little slow. We're going to check the wheels on the cart. The wheels that really might have affected the time of Willie, I'm sorry, of Joe and Willie. No, Joe and Paul. <laughs> I forget their names. 
He doesn't really look like a Paul, Joe, or Robert, does he, Tom? No, he actually looks like that guy Dustin again from 21 Jump Street. You gonna stick around for the award ceremony? I doubt it. I want to get out of here before one of these filthy fucks tries to bump a smoke off me. <laughs> Good plan, Hugh. We'll see you next year, everybody, out there in Bumland. We look forward to remaining the leader in Bum Sports programming, and thank you for watching. I've got no money, no place to go. I can't have it. You made a mistake. He talked to me, and I talked to him. But I didn't put him down. I gave him positive thinking. I said, yeah, I know you can do it. And he done it. And he said, you know you can do it. That's the reason why we did everything on time. See what I'm saying? Timing is everything. Timing. Timing. I hadn't brushed my teeth in three or four years, so it took a lot of work to knock, knock the fucking top layer off. Stuck at the light, feeling all right, but my window's open. I guarantee you I'll have them by fucking one whole minute. job, I knew it was hard when I took it off. Now, place is working good. And that is. That is. Please, I just love what you've done with the place. It looks great. It did come together nice, didn't it, Mink? You know, the only bad thing is that you did come out a little over budget. I know, I know, but we're prepared for that. Here's the overage. One. Two, three pennies. You completely redid the study and it looks great. Oh yeah, everything is organized so well from his magazines, his books, and everything he needs within reach. Okay, Larry, you ready to see your new place? Uh, I'm always ready. Okay, I great. I was born ready. <laughs> Open up your eyes, take a look. <laughs> oh, this is so much better, man. Yeah, I'll tell you, when Larry and I first walked in here, I didn't know if we were going to be able to get this thing done. I mean, having to knock out a wall to add on to the bathroom. It turned out great. Callie, Callie, come on in. Okay, fine. Damn. What the hell happened? Thank you, everyone, for joining us for another great episode of Trading Boxes. And Larry and Callie, thank you very much. It was another successful episode. Stay tuned for next one. Another success story in downtown L.A. I love you, too, Ooh, but I wish it could be more success than it is. But do you know what I mean? Kind of thought of somewhere, huh? I say clowns have more fun. Is that true? Fuck you. <laughs> You know? Yes.
see. I turned her on, now I can't turn her off. Right now, we're on the trail of a real dangerous bomb. It's actually a species that steals from other bombs. Hold on, mate. Hold on. Come on. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo. This is a good one. It's a live one here. It's all right, though, mate. It's all right. It's all right. Just want to take a look at it here, mate. Want to take a look at you. Woo. This one's a good fighter. All right, hold on there. Let me get a knee on. All right. As you can see, this one ran away from me right away. He knew that I was coming after it. He was trying to get a whirl, a word around the colony. For anybody who's stealing from other bombs, we're going to take his car away. We're going to return it to the people. He's obviously an older one. It means it's a lot harder for him to make any kind of living at all. So he obviously has to steal from the other bombs. He's, uh, he's quite skinny. Look at this here, mate. Look at that bounce. Look at the bounce. Look at how hard he's breathing. Uh, he must be really scared. He's really scared of me right now. Uh, all right, look at that. Look at this here. It's all right there, mate. He's really scared right now. He's not really saying anything. Up and up there, mate. Just want to take a look. Just want to take a look. All right. Put your teeth together there, mate. Ah, oh, look at that. That's a beauty. Look, he's got no teeth. A lot of times, what happens is smoking crack. What it will do, it de deteriorates your gums and your teeth. So this guy's lost all his teeth. He's obviously been out here for a while, smoking crack for a long time, because he's got no upper bridge there at all. I mean, look, take a good look at that again, mate. It's not, you don't see that yeah, much. Yeah, he's really got no yeah, teeth at all. Yeah, he's obviously not yeah, very well shaven. Yeah. I'm gonna let him sit here for a minute. I wanna take a look at his car and see what he's stolen from other guys. Mate, you know what these are? These are bike tires. A bomb's main means of transportation. This one obviously doesn't have a bike, so what is he doing with bike tires? It doesn't make any sense. He obviously stole them. These are deflated bike tires too. The bomb value of these is at least a dollar, maybe a dollar 25. Motor oil. Obviously this bomb doesn't have a car. So what's he doing with motor oil? Obviously stole it. Ah, look at, oh yeah, we hit the jackpot. Look at this. He's got cookies in here, different packages. A lot of homeless organizations will come down and feed these bombs with gift packs like this. This bomb's so skinny. He's got no means for food. He probably only eats maybe one cookie a day at all. So we know this is on for him. What he'll do is he'll get a sack like this and he'll sell it off to somebody else and hopefully get that money for crack. All right, mate, let me get away from him. You can jump off him. Bombs like that really piss me off because you know, they're just out here trying to make a living, trying to succeed in life and try to just survive. And guys like this are like leeches. They're like leeches that you see on the body. They're like the blood suckers because they obviously can't fend for themselves or make any kind of money for themselves. So they have to steal from others. It's quite sick out here. Turn the cameras off, man. I'm, I'm upset. As you can see, we've obviously done the best we could with our government grants. But we're hoping that there's some major philanthropist out there that will be motivated by our research and want to give us more advances to lead an expedition on the most feared bomb out there. The Madras Grandes, aka the Big Mama, the person that took down my grandfather who I will personally avenge his death. Despite my family's warning, all over this great nation, I will lead the expedition to find her and to hunt her down. So, for Bum Hunt 41, be safe and bums rule! Give a word, can't give a beat. Good looking out there, Brian. You have everything I ever wanted. I'll change my life for you. And I think twice. Hey, you don't like me now. How do you like Larry now? Yeah, all of y'all out there. Them 52, how many states? 52? 52 states, oh. Larry. Hey.
Now, for the first time ever, feel the pain, feel the rush, experience the unfucking believable insanity. All from the safety of your own home. Backyard Wrestling The Video Game, coming soon.